Hey out there Akronites, welcome once again to Around Akron with Blue Green. Now this episode is all about hip hop here in Akron, Ohio. We're going to talk to a b-boy, we're going to talk to a DJ, we're going to talk to an MC, and we're going to talk to a guy that's capturing all these beautiful moments on film. Now to kick this episode off, we're going to go talk to Dre Live, and he's going to talk to us about the history of being a b-boy since way back in the day in the early 80s here in Akron, Ohio. Let's go see what this guy's all about. In the end of seventh grade, early, uh, yeah, in the seventh grade, I'm out with my man Sleazy, and we're watching some cats dance. You know, they're doing just some nothing, you know what I mean? And uh, I tell him, this is why I really claim 84, because that's when I really kind of got the craft, but 83 is when I first tried it, you know? And uh, I'm telling him that I'm better than these cats. So he's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm better than them dudes, man. And then from that moment, though, I did blaze those cats, but they were herbs, though. But um, from that moment, he started going around saying that my man Dre is better than you. Well, at first, in the 70s and the early 80s, I used to slide down to the uh, skating rinks, and I would watch the, the cats in the middle, and they would do all the tricks and everything, and then there'd be some brothers in there that would pop, all right? So now we're talking, because we're from Ohio, so now we're talking like very early 80, 79, 80. And so uh, in 83, there was a brother who, God rest his soul, named Steve Lockett, who was down at the Urban League. I was there with my cousins. They were in this group called the Gigolo Rappers, who also made this particular talent show, right? So my man was out here with these beat, well, basically poppers, but he was out there rocking on the strength. He was rocking like a safari hat. It wasn't quite a Kango. He had on the denim jacket, mock neck. He had on the, uh, he had his name, Steve, name belt on, no joke, you know what I mean? Um, Pumas, right? Levi's, just fresh, you know what I mean? And this brother went out there and he did like uh, footwork, just real typical, I mean, real easy stuff though, but <clears throat> at the time, like it just wasn't here yet. So this brother went out there and blazed it. So when I saw that, it was just right after I had saw this 2020 episode on uh, ABC, uh, basically about the whole culture. And when I had saw that with my own eyes, I had knew, um, cause I really couldn't, uh, I really couldn't pop or lock, you know what I mean? But when I saw that, I felt like that was something I could grasp. So my older cousin, Jeff, uh, was b-boying and him and some other cats like Tricky you know those cats was b-boying and me and Jeff had always been real competitive and when I had saw him uh, learning just moves man you know I had wanted him to show me some stuff you know and it's kind of how it went down all right my first b-boy name was Kid Uprock. So once I got that um, and was able to ex extend like my runs with just variable top rocks, you know, and just quick drops, freezes, you know, I could start to take out cats earlier, you know, without like learning how to do windmills and backspins yet. So that's kind of how it, it, I was introduced. But the first, first move where I knew like um, I can go out there and get loose was the backspin of chair freeze because that was the run that my man Steve Lockett ended up doing. He did what you know, just some little left and right Lucy beginner B boy stuff. But it was like, whoa, we in Akron, Ohio, you know, this is '83. And then he does a backspin into like not a real good chair freeze, but it's cherish, if you know what I mean. Considering, I mean, later on he was the man on both of these moves. I'm trying to tell you also, but um, this is him at like 14. Was basically our answer to uh, cats doing it the way they want to do it. Like, okay, well, this is how we want to do it. We want to have our type of MCs there, our type of B, you know, B-boy scene there. You know, we, had the, we were the first ones locally, um, locally um, to have B-boy battles, MC battles, that's for sure you know, in those 90s, like, you know, bringing all that whole thing back, you know, bringing graffiti walls, black book competition, you know, just making sure that the elements was always recognized, never focusing exclusively, even though we could, on b-boying, because 
uh, there were only three of us. So we, in our group at the time, so we didn't want to discourage other B-boys. You know, maybe they wanted to be with us. I'm like, no, why don't you guys do your thing in your city? So it's the same with concept with uh, when you asked about the music and how I feel about it. I always just felt like it's better if you do your thing. Like, let me try your ribs. Let me try your fish. You know, let me see if then I want you to try my lasagna. You know, we'll go like that. Like, you know, and then learn from another. You know, and I always tell them, like, yo, if it's dope, but you bring it into the table, it's dope, we'll be there. Or one of us will be there, like, if we can. Like, we'll fit that in, like, you know. And that's kind of how it's always been. And so now, you know, um, over the last, like, uh, 21 years, man, like, our concept, like, especially me and Gunt, and even Dome, like, we don't care. We're going to do it how we do it. Next up, we're going to talk to photographer Josh Land. Now, this guy has been recognized as one of the best hip-hop photographers in the entire state of Ohio. Let's go see what this guy's all about. Chase Jarvis, the best camera for you is the one you have. It's the one that's with you. So, it doesn't matter if it's a point or shoot. If it's a fancy, high-dollar DSLR, film camera, whatever. Whatever you have with you is the tool that you need to use and use it to the best of your capability. I'm, I'm very meticulous. I, I would, it's funny because I had a, I had a business partner that um, we would shoot weddings and he'd just be sitting there just rattling, just filling memory cards. Um, I'm a sniper not a machine gunner. So a moment talks to me and it's just, it's Henry Cartier Brisson, the moment. You, you just train yourself. I don't know, it's a gift, I guess. Really, it, it, it started and was inspired by the Ill Style Rockers. 21 years strong in Akron, Ohio. Um, been shooting with them for five years. Um, my love for, for hip hop uh, goes back to my, my coming up, um, you know. A lot of the things in the core basis of hip hop were vinyl tracks mixed together. Um, James Brown, love James Brown. Um, as long as I can remember, I've I've always been into hip hop. Love all love all music for the most part, but hip hop hip hop comes down to it's it's where my heart's at. Where my soul's at. Personally, I've come across probably five or six guys that could really hit it big. I mean, raw talent. Um, young Cat, Jet Suede, he's unreal. 22 years old. Produced his entire album 100% himself. Um, lyrically, is just he's a walking thesaurus. He's, his delivery is un, 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 untouchable. He's just blown away by him, for sure. A um, couple others, uh, Flaco Torres, um, Geronimo Black, G Black. He's another one that's, his, his project that's coming up is one to look forward to. It's called The Soundtrack, Story of His Life. He's been working on it, I think five years now, maybe six. It's unreal. To me, it's timeless. Black and white doesn't really matter 
you know, where you're at, what you're doing, what's going on. Um, color, when I shoot an image to color, it, it needs to actually speak to me like it needs to be in color. Um, it needs to be vivid. Um, a lot of the things that, that I do are real dark, um, so black and white. I, I tend to go real extreme with my black and white photos. It's very, very high contrast where I was taught not to go into that. More, more details, I still have some details in my shadows, but there's really black blacks. Um, but as far as as far as shooting color, it I was I was trained to um, to shoot color, and it needs to be in color. Um, I don't know how to really piece that together, other than it just doesn't work for me in black and white, or. If it needs to be in color, it wouldn't work for me as well. It just, it just really saturated, really, really vivid. I don't know, I, I kind of forgot all the rules. <laughs> I just, I don't know if it's instinct, muscle memory type thing, as far as when I shoot. I just I get in the zone, get in the vibe, especially in, in music, uh, when I'm shooting music events, it's just, Get in a roll and just basically become one with the with the scene and the vibe and I shoot. Next up, we're here at Square Records to talk to MC Flaco Torres. Now this guy is making waves all over the country with some of his music. Let's go talk to Flaco and see what this guy is all about. I think my first first performance, I was a kid. I was like six or seven. I played violin, I played trumpet, I was terrible. Um, but I being in front of people has never been like an uncomfortable thing for me like public speaking i always like doing that in school um so yeah but like my first hip-hop performance i was like 19 um or 20 yeah somewhere around there cemeteries right. i only said i'd stay down here until february right. some of the best situations seem temporary it turned out great they think i'm a visionary there's something fun about just writing still like putting pen to paper so i do that um sometimes it's with choruses like I just seeing the words, like looking at the words on paper makes melodies pop out of that or makes like tone or, or like uh, expression out of that. But you know, when I'm out, my phone, like just lines come to my head, put it on my phone. Um, usually when I'm recording, it's easier to just have your phone rather than trying to flip pages the way we used to do. We used to have the big legal pad and you're trying to like flip, flip the page in between like breaths and stuff. So. Uh, but yeah, however I can get the idea down. Voice notes, um, I do that a lot too, just how melodies are. I'll just straight freestyle something that's in my head, in my phone, real quick, so. You started making lofty promises on how we would live. I went along with it to save face and made you an anthem to play. We still reminisce about- Man, the second day we were here, the uh, we were in the library just kind of using the, using the internet or whatever until we got internet set up at the house and I looked over and it was two studio rooms. And I was like, oh, okay, that's probably just like study rooms or something. And I went and looked at it and I was like, yo, this is a free studio in here that you can, uh, what is it? You get four hour blocks and you just call or go in and set up, give them your name, say, hey, I want to show up at noon on Tuesday and I'll be here until four. And then you go in and they've got a computer set up um, with a, a program that I'm not really familiar with, but it's really easy. Um, they've got a mic, uh, full stack keyboard, 12 channel, 16 channel mixer or something like that and all that in there. Like, it was crazy to me that they, there's like a lot of resources in the city where they just, they want you to win. If you want to win, like you can. And if you don't, then sit and complain. Like there's just, you, you have two options and there's, um, you can do, you can do photo shoots at the library. You can do, there's a green screen we use for one of the music videos off the project. This is all like in the library for free. You just come in and sign up. And, and then you hear people say like they can't do things that there's nothing in Akron and all that. And I'm just like, well, I'll use these resources if you won't use them because, um, you know, this it, it just goes back to that. If you want to do something, you can do it. So I think Akron is a really great place, or it has been for me this year. The way I was taught, MC moves the crowd. That is 
that is always what it's going to be. It, it may change in how you move the crowd with the trends and, and all of that stuff, but the MC is about controlling the room. And that was one of the first things I learned when I was getting serious about this and just learning about hip hop music during my like late teens and stuff. My uncles and like OGs around me and stuff was like, you know, this is dope, but like you got to know about Grandmaster Flash. Like you got to know about Tribe Called Quest. You got to know about like the, the West Coast movement, Dr. Dre and all that stuff. Like, you know, Ludacris is, is dope or like these new artists are dope, but make sure you know where it came from, you know, being born in the late 80s. You know, Tribe Called Quest, early Busta stuff, Wu-Tang. Um, like that was what we were listening to or like that's what was happening when we were that age. But then we were also listening to the newer stuff. So the OGs were just coming in like, yo, don't don't forget about like what this is about. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what it means to me, man. It's about it's about controlling the room. It's about having a message. Right, 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 right. Switch it sounds like a cross right, 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 right. Same clothes for a couple of days. I don't mean fashion when I say I need I, I just feel like I should say hip hop is the biggest culture on the planet and people should definitely respect that. Just definitely respect it a little bit more. Um, I know that the trends and stuff are cool, memes are cool and all of that, but really like the essence of what hip hop is about and what it represents, it drives 92% of culture on this planet right now. So it's definitely just respecting it and understanding that. I think it's easy to forget that when something becomes commercialized you know what I mean like it's easy to be like oh no 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 this is a this is different like you said there's you can listen to country songs now and I, I hear the producers I'm like I know who made that beat and that that beat probably went around through R&B artists and hip-hop artists and got passed and then it ended up over here and that's what's popular right now so that's what they're doing so that's um it's hard to remember that it is ours but I think that's what I meant too by respecting it is let's not let this get away from us and then like a lot of things in um, pop culture now um, I was at a I won't say the company I was at the store and I seen a jean jacket they sell jean jackets now and with like the buttons and everything this is one thing that uh, I learned from like indie rock cats putting buttons and patches and stuff on it, it personalizes your jacket so when somebody walks walks up they say oh that's a dope button and then I have a story to tell and I walked in a department store and they were selling jackets with the patches and the buttons already on them but that's what happens when culture, when a part of a culture gets so big, corporate takes it and then sells it back to us. And that partly is happening with hip hop right now. And I feel like if we if we grab our culture back and respect it and say, no, 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 we're not we not going to sell this for, for a million. We're going to wait and you got to give us 10 million and then we still get to do it our way. I feel like those conversations need to be had a little bit more and we need to we need to hold on to that sometimes a little bit longer so we can. So it's continued to be expressed the way that it should be. Next up, we're gonna to talk to Forrest Gidham Gunk. Now this guy is a DJ and a b-boy extraordinaire. He's performed all over the world and he's a living legend right here in Akron, Ohio. Let's go see what this guy is all about. Basically it's uh, the proper name or the original name for what they would call break dancer, but we don't call it break dancer, or break dancing, breaking or b-boying. So um, for argument's sake, some people say it'll stand for Bronx Boy, some people say it stands for B-Boy. I just said, you know, Break Boy. What I'm really, where I really come from as a DJ is basically from a B-Boy. I was a B-Boy first. So I was always into those drum breaks and those sounds and that, that percussion. So that's where, that's where I built my skeleton as a DJ off of drum breaks, percussion. And so um, that requires going out, digging in record stores, taking a portable, listening for sounds, um, and just basically finding, you know, looking for the perfect beat, I call it. Like I need to find, not what every other DJ is playing, but find something that's exclusive for me. Of course, because they're records and they're produced in mass quantity, um, it's only a matter of time before somebody finds what you find or you find what somebody else has found. But that's where I built my sound as a DJ. Um, then I, you know, venture off into just music I like. You know, whether it be hip hop, jazz, soul, um, just stuff that I just like to play. I don't necessarily have to mix it or cut it or scratch it, but just stuff I like to play. So that's how I built my collection and 
who I am as a DJ. If you're coming to hear Forrest Get em Gump, you're gonna hear drum breaks, and a lot of them you probably never heard before. Um, as far as b-boying, I never quit doing that, so my dancing always drives what I'm looking for. Like when I'm out here listening for music, I'm like, can I break to this? Or would I break to this? If it's yes, then I'm gonna pick it up. If it's no, I might still pick it up, but I might shelve it. I might just say, well, I got that drum break, and I might just leave it, leave it there. Um, but not all drum breaks are good either. Let's talk about that because just because there's drums on a record doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna satisfy a dance floor or satisfy the b-boy. Um, so I like to trust my innate internal instinct in finding those drum breaks. Like if, when I dance to this and if I really feel it, then that's what I do. I pick it up, buy it, and use it. Start in the 80s, of course. Um, I've toured all over the world. Did you know a few world tours as a, as a b-boy? Um, Australia, New Zealand, Hawaii, Finland, Denmark, Portugal, uh, Italy, Switzerland, um, Russia, Bulgaria. I can't remember every place, but um, you know what was, what was cool to me about it was I've been in. A lot of countries where I didn't speak the language, but I was able to communicate with b-boys just through the dancing. And we didn't really have to, you know, we had a little language barrier. Um, so that was kind of cool that you could pretty much be a b-boy and go find a b-boy community within whatever country you're going to and connect with b-boys and, you know, make lifelong friendships. I got uh, four crates right over there. Um, I'm always about carrying the crates. Um, I haven't really completely transitioned to the digital side of DJing. Um, I can see the importance of it in some ways, like when you're doing gigs overseas, which I've done. Um, you know, since 9-11, they have all these weight and, and carry-on regulations, so in some sense, a computer helps for that. Um, but if I'm just doing a gig at home, I have to bring the records out. As far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, I know, like, I'm not trying to disrespect the digital DJs, but, you know, you have a laptop with 10,000 songs. I'd rather bring 100 records and see how I can work that in a night. I've seen it grow, I've seen it come. I mean, there's still good hip hop here. Um, I guess as some people get older, they stay in the house a little more. But we're still out here. I mean, we've been doing this for 21 years, so we're gonna keep on doing it. So we're always gonna keep that b-boy tradition here in the city, whether it's 50 of us or two of us. So we're always gonna keep that alive. So that's why we do this every year, because you know we'll have b-boys here from Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and you know other states. Just, just jump into it, man. Just jump into it if you can. Um, I would kind of maybe seek out an elder and maybe get some guidance, but not to the point where it's going to ruin your creativity. Um, because I know some of us can be a little harsh on a younger generation because you know, we gotta, gotta face it, Some there's a lot of whack stuff out here right now, so. I would say, I, I would get with an elder maybe and, and kind of learn the ropes a little bit. You know, have them show you how to use equipment, have them teach you how to DJ, have them show you how to break at least the basics and, you know, plant some strong seeds and then use your own creativity and grow from there. Thank you for watching yet another episode of Around Akron with Blue Green. Now, if you have an idea for a segment or you just want to say hey, you can reach out on the website at www.aroundakronwithbluegreen. Or you can reach me on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll see you next time on Around Akron with Blue Green. I can't help.
Per usual. This is a breakup song. I'm really good at things. It's a happy one, though, right? You know? And I can't tell you. <laughs> I can't tell if it's real. Slim, what up? <laughs> a lover, pops a hustler, so no wonder I'm a lover and a writer, I was a bright eyed kid with no prior, record of records to push, around the time nobody wanted to have a regular look, we all wanted to be from out of space, maybe subconsciously we all knew the planet's almost done anyway, I'm just trying to dodge my thoughts to cemeteries, right. I only said I'd stay down here until February, right. some of the best situations seem temporary, it turned out great, they think I'm a visionary, I'm really just a man with the to care. A big heart and some curled up hair. Baby, it's a big world out there. I wanna see it all, and maybe I'll come back to you. Yo, 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 yo. This is for you, right? For you, for you, where? Tap. Check it out. Always been hungry for success, but we live in a greedy society, so sometimes you gotta look past the belly and...